Hello y'all, I am back again for another video. And this video is going to go over and cover statements. You can consider these statements like naive or maybe narcissistic. It depends on what place it's coming from. And I will describe the statement and I will go into at least two examples of situations where this statement alone is just proven wrong over and over. And a lot of times when people make statements, their downfall is that they don't watch enough crime cases. So they will actually know the accurate information. So what is the statement? And I wrote the statement down because I actually have video ideas, y'all. So if I'm reacting to a statement or comment, and I'm not one of those YouTubers where I want a lot of attention for reacting to somebody and proving them wrong. So I think what I'm gonna do is more so elaborate on this statement. So this is a general stereotypical statement. So the statement was made saying, someone doesn't look to par or that he doesn't look like a gangster. The preppy type, this is the statement. Now, this particular person's background, you know how you kind of get bit, bits and pieces of their background. He comes from a big city and he was seen to be kind of like in a hood, but it's one of those major cities where so many parts of it got some hood in it, y'all. It just does. So, okay, so let me say it again. Saying someone doesn't look to par or that he doesn't look like a gangster because he looked like the preppy type. So someone was being displayed on a TV movie or show or something like that and he's the preppy type and y'all know what the preppy type is you know he's clean cut looking not sagging his pants maybe not so long of hair collar shirt he's a professional okay a preppy type doesn't mean he's a nerd or geek or all those negative words. And I think basically what they would call nerd or geeks is really the preppy type, y'all. They just being called nerd or geeks. So let's look up gangster. Because you know, when I do videos, because not necessarily what the dictionary thinks a word is, is what I think it is either. You know, words are very, um, hold on, gangsta meaning. Oh, it has gangsta in the Urban Dictionary too. We'll see what it means on there too. So, hmm. Yeah, and this is um pretty bad. I mean, this ain't what a gangsta is to me, y'all. It's a gang member. No, absolutely not. That ain't what, it, that's what they saying it is. Okay, a gangster is a gang member or it's a type of rap music featuring aggressive lyrics, often with reference to gang violence. Okay, so what this is, is a cover up. The dictionary wants you to believe that this is what a gangster is which is someone that's a gang member, someone that's just a rapper with aggressive lyrics. They don't want you to know that a gangster or criminal is somebody that can put a whole bullet in John F. Kennedy's head and blow part of his brains off to where Jacqueline Kennedy is holding his brains. Who did that was gangsters. I'm quite sure that who blew John F. Kennedy head off or part of his brain 
where they had to sew it back on in the hospital, yet claim that he literally died that day. Whatever. You can believe that if you want to. That's a whole nother piece to it. However, and he may have died that day. Who knows? But there's so much more to the story. I watched um, a documentary on it that almost scared the living life out of me. Or they don't want you to know that gangsters or people that this is going back to the Kennedys and all this chaos. In this particular case, Marilyn Monroe. Gangsters have Marilyn Monroe's death certificate still saying it's a suicide. When there was witnesses and there's evidence that it wasn't a suicide. Gangsters had Michael Jackson overdose, the doctor. Gangsters killed Anna Nicole Smith. Gangsters killed their own kids. Marvin Gaye's daddy, Marvin Gaye Sr. Those are gangsters, not what this freaking bull crap say here. This is a this is a form of gaslighting because they don't want you to know what a real gangster is. I can be one. You mess with my family. I could step in a gangster's shoes for a few hours if need be, depending on what you do to me, even though I could be an empath. Gangsters are not all narcissists and sociopaths and psychopaths either. Because that's basically what this description is saying. When it says a gangster is a gang member or a rapper that's rapping aggressive lyrics, they making you think that um, gangsters are all freaking psychopaths and narcs. Because when you think about what I just read to you, you don't think about... How can I say this? Um, you're thinking about just psychopaths. You're not thinking about empathic gangsters or paid hit killings and stuff like that. So this particular person said, you know, this is what a gangster is. So, so basically, he's considering a gangster what this lie in this dictionary just said. He's going along with the lie. That's why he said gangsters are not the preppy type. So, it's so much to this. <laughs> yeah, it, it says, so let's see what the Urban Dictionary says. That would be interesting because that was just the regular dictionary online saying that. So, the Urban Dictionary, let's see what it says. And, and the Urban Dictionary, to me, to be honest, might give us a better definition. And I want us to get the right definition down before I start talking more about this subject matter. It's in the wrong way to spell. Mm, no, that's not it. Yeah, it says usually a teen female who is conceited and popular. Okay. The act of being a complete awesome person, most likely to be a wannabe. Modes like ninja, dino, gangster, or any other sort of sweet. A gangster is somebody that got a heart and soul and ain't to be played with and mean they business, okay? You know, we shouldn't paint it as such a bad thing, y'all. You know, if it's used in the appropriate matter. And I just gave some examples, you know, the Kennedys, you know, John F. Kennedy being murdered. That's what a gangster is. I'm quite sure who they had blow John F. Kennedy part of his brains out of his head, nine times out of 10, it wasn't no dude 
that was no rapper because back then rap was not that popular gangster rap like it is now so didn't know man black or any other race have no pants sagging wasn't rapping no lyrics because of the year kennedy was killed john f kennedy was killed before i was born y'all however didn't no gangster rapper do that it was most likely somebody that looked just as professional as john f kennedy okay so that's what a gangster is so I'm rebuking what was said that a gangster can't be the preppy type because you would consider John F. Kennedy more of the professional, clean cut, so-called preppy type, right? So the killers that would have killed John F. Kennedy are the preppy type. So narcissistic stereotypes, and y'all, that's why narcissists get hurt so much. I mean, and when I say hurt, I mean physically hurt because of these type of stereotypes. So, okay, let me explain it like this or say this. With the way this gentleman, he's from like a hood in the big city. If I had that sick mentality and I was a so-called gangster that was after him, so to speak, I could put him down in a week. But see, I don't get involved in that type of life. Do you understand what I mean? But I'm just saying, due to the way he thinks, when he says gangsters are not the preppy type, that would make him pray. Say I was in St. Louis, back home where I'm from, and I was in that life, and I had some beef and I wanted to put somebody down or unalive them. You know what? I wouldn't have nobody from the hood do it. I would go right out to the county and get what you call the preppy type to put them down. You get what I'm saying? So that's why a lot of murders in hoods are not solved because they looking for people that's in the hood that did it instead of recognizing they had somebody else way across town that did it. And I'm gonna tell you about another case. It was a case where, and it kind of, it, it angered me a little bit on how the devaluation of that state, and I think the feds might've got involved, I'm not sure, but either way, even if the feds were not involved, just the state police, this is what they did in this case. I'm watching this case and this man committed a murder and he did it in front of anywhere from four to five people. So he had witnesses. So this is what this gangster did because this is a gangster here too, y'all. They witnessed the murder and see, a real gangster understands this. When I do something or a gangster does something, they understand that it can catch up with them even 40 years later. You see, case after case where gangsters have actually done murders, rapes, or whatever they've done, and let me take that out. I'm not really going to call a rapist a gangster. So and I apologize. I'm going to take that example out. Erase that. Exit out. Act like I didn't say it. I apologize. Not a good example. Let's just use a murder. We're not going to go into the rapist, pedophiles, and stuff like that. Because that's not... I don't consider a rapist a gangster. Okay? We're talking about unaliving people for business transactions or for grudges, revenge, stuff like that. Not, not a rapist. So, okay. So in this case, this man unalived somebody in front of four to five people. Okay. And the witnesses were witnesses. So this is what he did over a 
four to five year span, every one of those witnesses that witnessed what he did came up dead or they was kidnapped and never found. Some of them got shot down. They got the body. Some of them, some people just rolled up and just snatched them up. One lady was like a beautician. So I think she was one of the ones that witnessed the murder also. Now, it took four years approximately for this to happen. Now, the police and detectives gonna have the nerves to say that these murders were not linked. Yes, they were. They were absolutely linked. However, the reason they said that they were not linked is because of this. They don't want to recognize that that, what they would call black man, this is what America calls a black man. And I don't like these labels of colors, but I'm going to use that term so you know what I mean. Those what they call white men did not want to recognize that black man as being methodical and smart and intelligent and being able to plan that when when four to five witnesses see you murder somebody now a ignorant motherfucker that was not a real gangster would have reacted off impulse and tried to shoot them all down within the next month out of paranoia. We might almost want to consider a gangster like a, um, a professional hitman that never gets caught. You might want to look at a gangster more of that. Um, serial killers, some of them never get caught. Some of them go many, many years before they get caught. So... And racism is in the media. You know, you see it all the time with serial killers. They will say things like it was a, a, a thought out scheme. It was even with this Carly Russell case with her pretending like she was kidnapped. I think they called it a well thought out scheme or something like that. So there's this type of credit that's given to these criminals you know, the credit of just acknowledging that they had to use a lot of brain power to come up with that type of scheme. Like the average Joe couldn't just come up with that. And in Carly Russell case, it's not an intelligent scheme in my opinion, because they knew almost instantly her story wasn't adding up. It's not an intelligent scheme. That's a dumbass scheme. You being recorded on the freeway talking about you saving a little white kid that don't show up on no freeway cameras. That's not intelligent because she forgot all about the freeway cameras. What the hell? I don't view that as an intelligent. She's also very not intelligent because she came out and had her lawyer write a statement that she's guilty. Now they done locked her ass up. Intelligent scams, you actually get away with the shit. You not in fucking handcuffs, okay? That's an intelligent scam. So, and this is how a real gangster would think. Not how the world teaches you of what it is. So going back to this story where this man shot somebody down in front of anywhere from four to five people and over a four-year period had them all killed, kidnapped, or missing. And the ones that were missing were snatched up. They were able to confirm, okay, like the beautician lady. And this case is somewhere in my history, you know, somewhere in there. So I'll add that to um one of my playlists at some point it's somewhere I, I watched it months ago but that case is so interesting to me for one because of the racism in it how these white police officers and detectives don't want to just accept 
that that black dude, that's a real criminal, intelligent gangster. Now, he's not intelligent because he's killing. So when you murder, that removes some level of your intelligence. However, the intelligent part is to be able to actually not be linked to any of these murders. That's why the police and the state say that these murders are not connected. If they try to connect them and say they're connected, they have to give this black man credit for getting away with that and actually being able to do what white gangsters do all the time, which is get away with a bunch of murders through using their brain, okay? They don't wanna give this black man credit for this. So that's where the racism plays into play. If he would have been white, they would have said, yes, we suspect that they're linked, and he really used the intelligent part of his mind to commit these murders, but they don't want to acknowledge that for what they think is a black thug. So they're going to devalue, and he got away with it. And let me point this out. It took him four years to kidnap and murder all of those witnesses. They couldn't link him to any of it because most likely he had people, he, he hired professional hitmen. You, you couldn't place him at none of these murders. I know, I'm a good enough to, detective to know what he did. The little gangster in me knows what the hell he did. Okay, and the sad part about it is this. That first murder that he committed where all four of those people that he kidnapped and murdered that witnessed that murder, that particular gangster will never be found guilty for that first murder that he committed before he murdered pretty much all of the witnesses. And they're all dead. The ones that's kidnapped, they wish they was alive. They're buried in a ditch somewhere that only that gentleman that did that original murder would know about. They're dead, dead as a doorknob. I'm sorry. You know, we always want to keep hope alive and whatever and all this stuff. You know, if I'm walking down to the grocery store and somebody snatched me up off the sidewalk and I never appear again, I'm dead too. Stop thinking I'm alive. Stop thinking a, a sex trafficker got me. Don't think none of that. I am dead. Because if there's any way that I'm not dead, I'm going to crawl up from somewhere right back on the same sidewalk they took me from, even if I'm bleeding, and let y'all know that I'm alive. So we got to stop you know, this false hope, but I get it. I mean, there's no body found. But in this particular case with this gangster that did that first murder, he made sure over a four-year period he killed all those witnesses. And he did it so well as far as what he did and made it so that the police and the detectives in that state can't solve it. The only thing they could do to get revenge against him, because they're pissed that they can't solve it, is just devalue that there's no way he could have been that smart to come up with that. That's basically how they got out of that. Because they feel devalued because he planned and killed all those people and got away with it. And they might be so racist and sick that they really don't believe that a brother from a hood could do that. That's because they don't understand real gangsters. And that's another stereotype. Just like this one particular brother can say gangsters aren't the preppy type, you know, kind of like the Italian mobster type gangsters. 
That's the same thing the police do with the thugs. They say, oh no, it's, it's no way that that thug could have planned that level of a crime. I know that thug couldn't possibly have stole so many items that he has a mansion, not that thug. So that's another form of stereotyping too that's very narcissistic. And whenever these stereotypes are in crimes and you got people solving crimes that are doing or utilizing stereotypes, you can't solve the crime. Maybe if these particular police with that one gangster that murdered somebody with all those witnesses and, he, and offed all those witnesses, maybe if they stop thinking that he ain't smart just because he a black thug, what they think is a black thug, maybe they could saw the crime and find some of these people. And the problem with thinking somebody is a thug is a lot of them have extremely high Q, high IQs. Some of these, what you call thugs, will go off the scale on an IQ test. Almost, some of them are borderline geniuses. And this is what the white media won't be honest with you about. They just want to paint this picture that they are thugs walking around sagging. Some of them detectives cannot read as well as some of these thugs. Some of these detectives can't count as well as some of these thugs. And I'm witnessing to this because I've been around some thugs. And I'm talking about what the media and what the so-called white race might call a thug. Same way with the right white race. Some of those white men that they consider career criminals or what they would call blue collar criminals, they're highly intelligent, very efficient on their reading skills. Some of them are excellent in math and science, politics. And some of these detectives know this, y'all. They know that if they took a lot of those career criminals out of a prison, and you set them down, set the detective down, and you set that career criminal down, that career criminal will score higher on his or her IQ test. Because a criminal can be a female too. A lady or a woman can be a gangster too. So I just wanted to go over and get you to understand the narcissism also in a lot of this stereotyping. And it's very dangerous to stereotype. Because it does this too. It, it'll, it puts you in a more unsafe position. So if somebody knock on that door right now. I'm looking at my front door. And somebody knock on my front door. I look out that peak hole. Hmm. He or she looks preppy, y'all. I open that door and get shot down because somebody looks preppy. I hope this is making sense. So, and that's how a lot of y'all got with narcissists. Me too. Oh, he has on business attire. He has on a collar shirt, a nice hat. You know, he's not um my ex-narcissist. He's not a, a, a pants sagging guy. He don't dress like that. Up in age, much older than me. He wasn't sagging no pants. He wasn't dirty. Teeth wasn't messed up and dirty and grimy, none of that. And so that's probably one of the points I would like to make too that I definitely have to bring up is the stereotyping. Stop judging people and thinking that people are a certain way because they look preppy, smart, or intelligent. 
because it can also set you up to be in positions where you're being groomed by other narcissists. So it's, it's just not safe to think like that. And It's just not the safe way to think. So what else was I going to say about this? Um, oh, this is what I was going to bring up. One good example would be um, the murders I see. And these murders amaze me when you watch these cases and periodically they'll say the person that got killed was a black belt. And they got into a dispute or they were attacked by boxers, gangsters that are boxers. And I watched a video on this, several videos on why, why do street fighters win so many fights versus a trained fighter? A trained fighter Someone that has a black belt, they're a trained fighter. So why does a street fighter oftentimes, oftentimes be a trained fighter? And it said this, um, for one, the street fighter is not following rules. The trained fighter They've almost kind of been brainwashed, you know, like, okay, like in karate or, or, or black, a black belt, you know, if he grabs your neck, you, you kick like this, you do this, you do this with your hands. They're trained. A street fighter, they're not trained. So a street fighter, while you following some rules, like, okay, if he grabs for me, kick my leg. The street fighter then went and got eight bricks. See, because he's not trained. A black belt is not trained to pick up bricks. The street fighter is. And I just thought of that example. But in this video I was watching, it was explaining that the number one reason that street fighters win fights against trained fighters is they don't follow rules or they're not um, bound by these rules and they don't have any. So there's more flexibility. So, and I just threw in the example, that example was not used on the video, but the part that they don't follow rules. And what was another thing? Um, I think it mentioned um, their anger level too. The adrenaline and, and their strength comes from their anger. And this is another thing I think it mentioned too in the video. Okay, a black belt, they're trained, but a street fighter is skilled. You see the difference? It's kind of like the person that is hired that has the master's degree, but can't do the fucking work that they've been hired to do versus the person that's already basically been doing the job at the company the last 10 years that does not have the degree, but has the skill to do the job. And in turn, this company might have to get rid of the person with the degree because they find out that they can't do the job. They got the degree, but they don't have the skill set to do the job because the person that's been at the company the last 10 years has actually been doing the job. So examples like that, I hope these examples help. Y'all know how I am. I like to give real, real live examples. And um, yeah, and I, I would actually say um, as far as like fighting, I would have to compare myself more to the street fighter. I'm not no black belt. I'm not no man. I don't have the strength of a man, but can I win a few fights? Yes, I could because it's no rules. If somebody breaks in that door right now, 
what I'm talking to you on, on this device, becomes a weapon. Everything in here becomes a weapon. If somebody come through that door on me and my baby. So see, I'm not looking at no karate stunts and nothing like that. So that's the thing. So the stereotyping, somebody that actually says the preppy type is not a gangster is very naive. And why? Why, why would somebody, whether they be male or female, kind of be naive? It's because of this. This is why it's good to venture out in different areas or at least watch a video on it. If you've never been to the projects, maybe watch a video. If you never joined a gang, watch a video. That way you can get some kind of understanding of the rest of the world. So the reason this particular person may not consider the preppy type a gangster is because that's not what he experienced growing up. And by this individual believing that mentality, that can put him in danger. And this particular individual, he brags about, you know, rolling solo. He's, he's pretty much a family man. And that's how he should stay. Because if he can't see the preppy type as being a gangster, he could easily be set up. Very easily be set up. Because he's judging what a gangster is based on appearance. And we just shouldn't do that. That's why Ted Bundy got so many victims. And another thing about gangsters, because online, when I Googled it, it talked about rappers and gang members. Marvin Gay Daddy murdered his own son and was right out of jail. In my opinion, that's a gangster. Killed his own grown son, because you gotta think about it. Marvin Gaye Jr., he started that fight, that physical fight. Now his daddy started a lot of their disputes, y'all. Marvin Gaye Sr., Started a lot of stuff with his son when he was little. Telling him he going to kill him and all that stuff. He had been telling Marvin Gaye Jr. that he was going to kill him. He told all the kids, y'all ever hit me, I'm going to kill you. That's a gangster too. They stick to their word. He actually killed his son. So Marvin Gaye Jr. put a good ass beating on his daddy. But Marvin Gaye Jr. was not no gangster. His daddy was. His daddy went and got the same pistol that Marvin Gaye Jr. gave his dad. Remember, the person he killed gave him the gun. Marvin Gaye Jr. gave him that gun. And his gangsta ass daddy that was running around when he was little wearing women's clothes all around the house and shit. And that's another thing you want to think, oh, a transgender ain't a gangster. A man that's running around wearing his wife dress ain't a gangster. Bullshit. Murdered his son. Did no more than a couple of months or whatever he did in there. Standing up in court with his crazy ass talking about he didn't mean it. And he got off because Marvin Gaye Jr. was a singer. One of my favorite singers, y'all. I would have gave his daddy so much damn time for killing my sexual healing. Yeah, I would have. He would have did life. You didn't kill. You didn't kill my, one of my favorite singers. No, you did know, man. 
Yeah, I would have. Yeah, and I would have um, considered it premeditated because he had been threatening them since he was a, a young boy. So um, I think his dad is just wicked. I think both of them had serious issues, but it's also wicked to beat on your daddy like that. He should have just left that man alone and went no contact. You don't do that. You don't beat up on your daddy like that. I know his daddy was weird as hell. However, it just was all bad. And the main manipulation, who was not a gangster, was Marvin Gaye mama and Marvin Gaye senior's wife because she didn't see that coming. So that's who ain't the gangster. That's an empath that was trying to keep the family together and it backfired, y'all. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I have no clue as to what I'm going to name this video. So I can't point that out in this video. So please like, share, and subscribe. I love y'all so, so much. And I hope you enjoy hearing my perspective on um, the preppy type is so-called not the gangster, y'all. Don't think that way. Most serial killers are the preppy type, y'all. So be careful out there. Thank you. Bye.